Today I'm going to give you part two of your introduction to weapons, which will include the weapon safety rules and weapon conditions. Knowing these intimately and applying them will make you a better weapon handler, which is important because there is no shortage of needless deaths and injuries that have occurred because somebody didn't handle a weapon properly. In fact, at OCS, they should tell you that there are no accidents with weapons. There is only negligence. We'll start with the four weapon safety rules. These four rules are intended to remove the possibility of a negligent discharge by the weapon handler, which could uh, result in the unintentional death or injury of another person. The first weapon safety rule is treat every weapon as if it were loaded. This rule should get you in the mindset that you should never ever handle a weapon carelessly because if you do and if it is loaded you could end up unintentionally killing or injuring somebody. Handling a weapon carelessly is never ever acceptable. Second weapon safety rule is never point a weapon at anything that you do not intend to shoot. This is especially true when it comes to other people. Pointing a weapon at someone that you don't intend to shoot is known as flagging and it is a cardinal sin. The only person who should ever have this perspective on your weapon is an enemy that you are intending to shoot. The third weapon safety rule is keep your fingers straight and off the trigger until you are ready to fire. So if you're carrying the weapon by the pistol grip, the default placement of your finger should be here. The only time it should make contact with the trigger is once you have identified a target and are ready to fire. And the fourth weapon safety rule is keep the weapon on safe until you intend to fire. So here's our safety selector lever and the default placement for the safety selector lever is on safe until you have identified a target and intend to open fire on that target. Now I'll just mention briefly that you will also take your weapon off of safe for something like a function check or weapons maintenance and uh, at OCS you'll be drilling so you'll need to take it off safe uh, during um, certain occasions for that but uh, those are very specific exceptions and the general rule applies in all other circumstances. Now you can remember these four rules with the ditty treat, never, keep, keep, or loaded, point, finger, safe. There is also a fifth unwritten rule that goes as follows. Know your target and what lies beyond it. Now I'll use buddy rushing as a way to illustrate the four weapon safety rules in action. I won't get into the all of the specifics, I'll just uh, use whatever terms I need to illustrate my point. So buddy rushing is a tactical movement in which one buddy provides cover fire while the other buddy bounds ahead towards the objective. Then that buddy gets down and provides cover fire while that first buddy bounds ahead. It's a, a tactical movement used to close with and destroy the enemy. And at OCS, remember, it's all about the basics. So when you're providing cover fire, <clears throat> you'll be stationary and you also want to get some cover yourself behind a tree or some other uh, form of terrain. So let's pretend that I'm the buddy providing cover fire. So my weapon's pointed in the direction of the target. I identify the target and then and only then should I place the weapon on semi-automatic and open fire. The second I am done firing, finger comes off the trigger and weapon goes on safe. And then I can get up and bound ahead. Now the weapon will be on safe for anything other than firing. So that includes bounding, that also includes reloading or any sort of remedial action. There are certain cases in which the weapon will not be able to switch from semi-automatic to safe uh, say there's an obstruction, uh, they will explain to you what to do in that situation at OCS. But uh, so I provide a cover fire, I get up, I bound, then as soon as I'm set again and ready to provide cover fire again, I once again reacquire that target and then open fire. As soon as I'm done, 
Weapon is on safe, finger is off the trigger. Next, let's discuss the four weapon conditions. A weapon condition describes the readiness of a weapon to fire. Condition four is least ready, condition one is most ready. At OCS, you will be using the M16 exclusively, so in this video, I will cover the weapon conditions for the M16. But at TBS, you will be introduced to several other weapons that are built and work differently from the M16 and from each other. As a result, each of those weapons has its own unique set of four weapon conditions. The instructors at OCS will also teach you how to determine a weapon condition for a weapon in an unknown condition. So for the M16, a condition for weapon has the safety on, the magazine is removed, the chamber is empty. You remember the chamber is on the inside of this part of the upper receiver. The bolt is forward and seated in the chamber and the ejection port cover is closed. A condition three weapon has only one difference from uh, condition four weapon. So the safety is still on. Now the magazine is inserted, the chamber is still empty, the bolt is still forward, and the ejection port cover is still closed. Now this is a condition three weapon regardless of how many rounds are in the magazine. So this could be filled to capacity, it could be half full, it could be entirely empty. So long as I have inserted this magazine into a condition four weapon, it is now condition three. Condition two does not apply to the M16 service rifle. Condition two is used primarily for single action, double action pistols. Condition one has one difference from condition three. So condition one weapon has the safety on, the magazine inserted, and now there's also a round in the chamber. So that's the difference. Uh, the bolt is still forward and the ejection port cover is still closed. Now the way to go from condition three to condition one or to make ready is to rack the charging handle back. And if you remember from my first uh, video, what that does is as you pull the charging handle back, that pulls the entire bolt carrier group back, and then on the return, as it slides forward, the bolt grabs a round off the top of the magazine and feeds it into the chamber. So once you've closed your ejection port cover, which is opened by uh, racking the charging handle back, once you close that, you now have a condition one weapon. Now, regardless of whether there is a magazine inserted or not, anytime you rack that charging handle back, the ejection port cover is going to come open, so you want to make sure to uh, close that up. There is no term that I know of for a weapon that is not in a defined condition. So, for example, let's uh, say that this weapon is condition four. We're going to assume that the chamber is empty. If this ejection port cover comes open, it is no longer a condition for weapon. You can think of it as a not condition for weapon, and you will get smoked for walking around with a weapon that is not in condition for at OCS. So that's it for this video. As always, if you have any comments or questions or whatever else, let me know. And as always, remember, it is not about you. Take care.